This is your daily Tottenham briefing. It wasn't going to be because um, not much is going on. Um, there's a press conference with Ryan Mason um, after lunch. Um, they won't tell us anything. And um, so what's not so much prompted as provoked me, and I have, I have extensive notes, which is how provoked I've been, was a comment left by a first-time commenter on the blog. And by a blog I did first thing this morning on the boy hotspur.com, which kind of went through like how we got here in terms of this Enoch out, Levy out, and all that angst. And as I replied to the gentleman uh, who left the comment, it would be fundamentally weird for me to leave. Um, a daily summary of everything I'd ever said and thought and done about Spurs. You know, that's why places have archives and, um, you know, newspapers have back editions and all that sort of thing. So I I did feel, as irritated as I was by the remarks, um, that it might be worth having this on, on record somewhere and then, you know, I can just give them a URL and we'll be done. So here's the comment. So... And I'm going to do it in that voice because it was written in that voice. So this isn't me like mocking the guy. This is how he talks. So, you know, the intonation is there and I'm going to pass it on. So what do you want to see happen at the club to take it forward? Two question marks. See, I wasn't being mean. That's the way he is. You appear to be anti T H S T. He's put the wrong letter in and anti Enoch and anti Levy. Let's hear your point-for-point point plan for success on the pitch. Which available manager should be appointed? What players should go for? Should we go for? And how should we fund them? Criticism and fine, but without alternative solutions, it's empty. Well, um, mystery caller, Spurs 61, um, I agree with you. Just sto throwing stones, or stowing thrones, Throwing stones is in itself an empty and futile exercise. And I'm pleased to tell you that it's something I've never done. Um, point for point plan since sounds to me, and I could be doing you a terrible disservice, that you're you're very interested in, in the Tottenham Hospital Supporters Trust and their point six point plan. But anyway, anti supporters trust, anti unit, anti levy. So Let's just clarify this, and if you don't mind, I'll use my language and not yours. I'm not anti the supporters' trust. The idea of a supporters' trust, the idea of a, an intermediary group between a club or a big organisation um, that, with no disrespect to anybody, does not have a great history for communicating well, public relations, definitely, you know, a, a lot more could be done, and that's always been the case. There are inadequate, confused, you know, people out there who need a helping hand and they can mop those up as well. So, you know, there's a number of reasons why something like that could be a good move. And also it gives a, a legitimate platform for feedback from the crowd, because I can tell you for nothing um, that, you know, I've been doing this a long time, which doesn't make me right, but it certainly gives, might lend me experience. Um, when, the board at Tottenham want to get uh, the temperature of the of the fan base. They go to the season ticket um, purchasers. They go to their top tier um, client reference numbers, and they don't ask the guy in the street. And so, a trust or association or whatever your fan club, whatever you want to call it, is a good um, intermediary. Um, a good stepping stone for, for regular Joes who don't have a season ticket because most people don't have season tickets. Most people don't go to games. You know, these, these dreadful home truths are, 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 are honest. And um, so somewhere for the, for the punters to be represented. So I'm, the reason I'm, 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 not, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm anti, but I'm in, in, in huge contempt of the people that run the trust because they're just stuffed shirts. The way they communicate, the way they speak, what they do, how they conduct themselves. I don't see anything. I don't see a single positive there. Um, it's nothing personal, but you're just weirdos. You don't represent me. 
um, and I wouldn't want to be in the same room as you. I don't think that's an unfair comment because I'm speaking openly and in hopefully um, a manner that most other human beings can understand. So, um, anti-Enoch and anti-Levy. Well, this is, this is a curious one again, because I wouldn't say I'm... If we think of what they are, again, Daniel Levy, nothing personal. So it's clearly my issues would lie with the way you have behaved and the way you have conducted yourself as an individual. Be that as a guy you bump into in a supermarket, or be you as the CEO of a football club that I was supporting long before you showed up. And Enoch, I'm not adverse to, to investment companies. Um, they're not a force for evil. <laughs> um, they, can, they can be. Um, so let's lose the sweeping statements. But I would say on balance that, you know, that uh, a corporation like this isn't something I wake up in the morning and it makes me want to spit. Um, the, the world is full of them. And again, it's nothing personal, but it's based upon how you, how they have conducted themselves. So if we can part, pause that there, because I need to carry on talking about Enoch and I need to carry on talking about Levy, because this is the extensive stuff that we need to think about. And talking about a manager and talking about um, player details and all the rest of it. Do you know something? I'm just going to say to you, get a really good manager in, a really good coach who knows what he's doing, one with a CV, and let him sort it out. Because um, it may stun you, it may shock you, but um, none of us are qualified to speak as some of the household names that are out there. So get uh, Mourinho in, get Brendan Rodgers in, get Sari in, get um, you know all of these guys with a CV. They'll sort that out because that's what they earn the big bucks for. So which way should we appoint? What players would you sell? Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about yourself. Focus on people who, are, who have the talent and the expertise um, because that's where your solutions lie. And criticism of the situation with all these stems back to two bodies, if you like, and that's Enoch and their representative on Earth, Daniel. So we can't tackle this now. And this is the point I'm going to try and make to you as clearly and as succinctly as possible. And this is going to overrun. This isn't going to be one of these 10 minute jobs. And the reason that nothing can be done is that, and I won't do the, 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 the uh, Ikea um, analogy again, but you can't stand outside um, a private business with, insert name here, out on a bed sheet. I mean, you can. You won't get stoned or um, zapped with electric things in, a, in an unsubterranean cell because we live in a, in a nice Western democracy. But it won't achieve anything. You know, um, I don't know who the head of the, um, the BBC is this week, but writing that guy's name or that woman's name on a bed sheet uh, without underneath it and standing outside wherever they are is it, I don't know I think they're in Great Portland Street anymore are they but you know what I mean it, it, it's just not going to achieve anything it's just nuts so that's why I'm, I'm not up for this demonstration and I'm I, I, and what I am telling you is that the, the ship has sailed and you missed it and I was here in the trenches dealing with some appalling people several years ago only five six years ago and nobody listened. <laughs> All right. So if you're looking at this thing and going, oh, my God, this guy is now about to embrace upon a, a 20 minute. I told you so. It's a little bit hopefully deeper than that and something you can get your head around. And I'm just trying to explain what happened. And hopefully you'll get it. And if you don't, then well, ask yourself, why are you now shouting Enoch out? And why am I, uh, am I the nuisance? It all begins with the stadium. Now, there's yards and yards of dirt, which I've got. <laughs> and I have to be very careful what I say. But football has been bent for a long time. This may shock you. But the stadium, who asked? What didn't happen is that the football club didn't ask. And I'm not talking about... Uh, 
um, you know, fans uh, uh, having a voice or um, anything else. I'm talking about the actual football club, the achievements of the football club, because it would be like, absolutely ridiculous for a business that was booming not to expand its premises. You understand that. It's a fundamental thing. So Spurs weren't hoovering up trophies domestically and abroad. That didn't happen. We were selling out because we could sell out. And this is the one thing I will say, as, as a business model, what Enoch have done so far, up until demolishing White Hart Lane, has been a colossal success. Huge success. But that, that's nothing to do with the football. The, the, business, the, the, the business of turning THFC PLC or Inc or whatever it is, into a money-making machine isn't something I'm opposed to. I think it's a good idea. But it all starts from the football club. And this is why I speak favourably about other clubs that have done things the right way and the way that virtually every business on the planet does things the right way. So I've mentioned Leeds recently because it's a brilliantly run club. And they have an ideal in their head of where they want to be and who they want to be. So the Leicester City, there's th th that that list is not uh, exhaustive. You know, there, there are plenty of clubs out there doing things the right way. But Tottenham are, are a parody. They're passing themselves off as something that they're not. So we build this stadium, of which the cost doubled in price. And it's important we go through these little things because there will be people out there who want to argue and bicker and negotiate. I'm not interested. I'm telling you what I think, and I bet you I'm closer to the truth than you are. Built the stadium, and the cost doubled, and the club came out and said, oh yeah, Brexit, Brexit, you know. The, this is the same thing that we're now seeing. And how many of you have been frustrated out of your minds with this? How many of you have got relatives who couldn't get an appointment at a hospital because the hospital was empty? How many of you couldn't get into a, uh, a supermarket or a, a shop that was non-essential? How many of you phoned a customer services number during the last 18 months or whatever it is and couldn't get through to anybody? It's COVID. COVID can't answer the phone. It's COVID. Absolute crock of guano. So Brexit, affecting the costs of the build of this stadium, not interested, didn't happen, you invented it, you made it up. So we had the financial incompetence. We had the micromanaging that went on in the stadium, which you've got no idea, no idea. I covered a few bits and pieces. Um, they tried to disguise the um, one massive blunder they made, and I covered it on the blog because I actually met somebody. I actually met a guy who was involved in the installation of um, the um, electric uh, system and they didn't buy the right one. They went off and bought another one and it didn't fit up with the fire um, thing and it didn't fit up with the um, business where you had to make an announcements to guide people out of the stadium in the event of a power failure or terrorism or, or all that sort of thing. I I've covered it on a blog. I'm not doing a great synopsis of it there. But they bought the wrong bloody thing and they had to rip a whole load of stuff out. So it wasn't a fire panel, as you were told. That was part of the problem. <laughs> it was by no means the problem. So once we go beyond the, the uh, economic incompetence and the, the micromanaging and the nitpicking and, oh, I'm not sure about those carpet tiles. Um, could we see them more with the, the, the ones with the lime green? Once we go beyond all this interference and stupidity that went on, there was also the way, and this is going back to the what don't, why are you anti this and anti the other, the, the way that these people went about doing this, building the stadium. Police were invited into the stadium and arrests were made for people using the, the, y, the y word, yids, a word that was misappropriated by nasty bigots in the East End of London a long, long time ago. And when they tried to charge 
these poor people who'd been singing this uh, word, you know, me, and yid, 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 yid. when they tried to charge these people, didn't stand up with the Crown Cr Prosecution Service. As well, it shouldn't. And then outside the stadium, we had the compulsory purchase orders. Uh, we're having this place. Pardon? Yeah, it's um, it's not for a hospital. It's not for a baby unit. We're just we're just expanding our private enterprise. So um, there's a, there's a check for the going rate. This is horrible. <laughs> this is a horrible way for a business. And this the, and, and this, what really stung, what really upset me, was the fact that they tried to masquerade what they were doing as as this regeneration. Societies have been really good and communities have been really good at regenerating themselves with a little bit of help from the government and a little bit of help from private money. They don't need, they do not need a Premier League football club patronising them and telling them it's all for their own good. They held a thing at Spurs, um, I'm trying to remember um, what it was, but it was, it was, it was, was it Watney or something? I can't, don't worry, let's not uh, slander anybody. But they had this open day thing, and it was it was being uh, it was uh, marketed as um, the promotional the the creation of two thousand jobs or three thousand jobs, and you know they were having all the, the, the this big sort of thing and stores and um, static displays and everything, and they were all okay. The bulk of them were were minimum wage service jobs. Now, some people are going to be benefited by that, that's for sure. But most people are not. And that isn't regeneration, helping your neighbourhood. That's mopping up a bit of local graft for not very much money to serve people who've moved into the area with expensive coffees. I could go on for days about this, actually, because some of the stuff that's gone on in Harringay is, is appalling. Um, uh, Look at what a poor door is. So they arrested people. Uh, sorry, they, yeah, they had a people arrested. Um, they made compulsory purchase orders. And then, after so long, so long, we were told that Levy was a, a business genius. And this goes down to one of the myths. There was the penury myth, the genius myth, and the academy myth. And I'm going to cover those on a podcast because that will take even longer than what I'm doing here. And in a nutshell, May 2017, these numbers will just go, <coughs> excuse me, just go past you. But they, they released the information that, that THFC had initially, the number was 350 million. And I don't know if you know if you remember that. And, and there were fans going bonkers on, on Twitter. Whoa. Triple A credit rating. You'll never see that. And I was just bewildered. I mean, I, I, I get a letter through from, uh, uh, you know, credit card company. Here's your pre-approved car for, card for £20,000. Who the hell is going to pay that back? It's not free money. I don't want it. So there's a £400 million loan taken out with £25 million thrown in on top for working capital. There was a letter of credit, which I understand came from Joe Lewis. And then there was, and this is the thing I want you to remember, because this is the thing that's kept me sane throughout all of these daft arguments with uninformed people. £240 million came from club resources. How many transfer negotiations went into the night, went up to the, 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 the two minutes to midnight and fell away over 68 pence? We had 240 million quid in a biscuit tin. Now, I'm not one of these characters who says, let's go out and blow the lot. You know, we're going we're gonna to win the Champions League because I've just found, you know, a quarter of a mil under my bed. But playing the penury card, the poverty card, when you've got a lump, is just... So the debt at that point was 637 million. This is for a club whose firm base 
excuse me, his fan base was littered with fans that were very proud that they weren't up to their ears in debt. And this is the killer. They didn't want to do a Leeds. You couldn't make it up. Honestly, for those of you joining us late from other clubs, that was the phrase going through our supporters' fan base. We don't want to do a Leeds. So fast forward, and it was only when the stadium gets built, and that was a weird kind of pornography in itself. There were people walking around, this was pre-COVID, there were people walking around with their mobile phones and their iPads, taking pictures of trucks pulling in with bags of cement on the back. I never understood it. I never will understand it. There, were, there was a guy who flew over the stadium building site every week, every couple of weeks, and was lauded by people on, um, was it skyscraper.net or something, some weirdo architect freakoid site. And I didn't understand that. Girders, oh yes, that's going to be the apex of the uh, weird, weird class of pornography right there. So they got the thing built and then it was, you know, it was all high fives because, you know, now we've got this world-class venue, we're going to have the NFL, blah, 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 blah. A two-game deal from the NFL. Two-game deal. That's two games a year. That's twice a year the places. And that warranted this Mark I technology because nobody else has had this pitch before. Even money, a toffee crisp wrapper gets stuck in it. <laughs> it jams. Even money. But looking at the football side of things, you see, that was all very exciting for some people, the building side and what have you. But it was only when Pochettino wasn't backed for, I can't remember if it was two or three, I think it was two summer windows back, back to back. And we were the only club in Europe, in, a, in, a, in any of the top five leagues, who didn't buy anybody. And this was when Poch had arguably one of the best and potentially most interesting sides since Keith Birkinshaw was around. So Pochettino wasn't backed and the penny started to drop for some, but not everybody, just for some. Then you were given Mourinho, which to me, a football man, I was insanely happy. I knew it'd end in tears. I said it would end in tears. <laughs> it did end in tears. But I was very happy, nevertheless. The gilt edge was definitely beginning to wear off at this stage because the Portuguese pulis had arrived and like clockwork, he fell out with people. Like clockwork, the football wasn't wonderful to watch. We all knew this. Those of us, you know, who aren't millennials, those of us who understand the game, knew these things were coming. But, and this is forever to... Um, uh, Daniel Levy's chagrin was the fact that we didn't need clowns like me telling you, look, this all makes sense. Don't panic. You know, Mourinho isn't actually a monster because they released the Amazon um, all or nothing thing. And we saw some of the players for the airheads that they truly are. And you know, Danny Rose. Yeah, if you see, if you see T Daniel, tell him I'm looking for him. I bet he was terrified. Drew his curtains and hid under his bed. Deli Alley, talking to us about chocolate bars. But the problem was that bringing Mourinho in, most sa sane people, I think it's the most uh, gentle way of putting this, felt that by then the squad was wrecked. The squad was wrecked before the Champions League final that we lost to Liverpool, which was fundamentally one of the most weird Tottenham games I've ever watched in my life. It was, it's just, we didn't play. It was terrible. Not taking anything away from Liverpool, they thoroughly deserved to win. But we'd had the Lucas Moura thing in the game before, and Levy, or Poch, because everybody was cracking up at that point, decided to play Kane, he wasn't fit. And he had a shocking game. So back to the real, back to the now. So Pochettino wasn't back, batched, wasn't backed. 
Mourinho was a was a, a stone in the shoe for many. The squad's fizzling out. And then the European Super League comes along and everybody loses their mind. Like, never seen anything like it. People were posting in response to the club were putting up the most inane content on their social feeds. And people were going, yeah, I hope we win today. In it out. Um, admin, show us a picture of Los, Los Elso. Hashtag leave, leave you out. It was just extraordinary. Which takes us back. So I was initially confused. I couldn't work out why. That you'd sat by and you'd watched all these other things go on. The arrests, the per compulsory purchase orders, the, the debt, the, you know, the, 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 the demolishing the stadium. I mean, and you'd, you'd not said boo to a goose. But it brings us back to the thing that football's been bent for forever. Tales of um, Terry Venables and Ken Bates, and that's two out of a massive, massive list. I could, I could tell you, they make your hair curl. But I think that, that the the European Super League protest or protests are actually a culmination of a whole lot of stuff that came before it. You know, it's like the wife walking out on her husband because um, he's not done the washing up. There was a lot of dark stuff that went on before that sink was left <laughs> full of pots and pans. And we've been fed by the sort of woke element of the, of the fan base, this business about the football pyramid. Ah, football's bent. I've never heard the phrase football pyramid before in my life. Ponzi scheme, yes, but pyramid, no. So, what are you saying then? Because that's where we started off here, with this Spurs 61 chancer wanting me to give a summary of everything I'd ever said for the last, whatever, at the end of every article that I write this week. What I'm saying is you've missed, missed the boat. The, 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 the horse has bolted, and now you're saying to me, Right, so what are you going to do then? And what I'm saying to you is that had somebody stepped in, and it's almost like when I was one of the few voices, not the only voice, but when I was one of the few voices saying, look, guys, this really isn't a good idea. We've not earned this stadium. The expansion thing, I just don't under really, no, it's not good. This, Let's stop. Let's think this through. It needed, we needed our lives to be directed by Tarantino or Guy Ritchie. You know, when they, they freeze the moment and they explain the, the avenues, the different routes that things could take. And the problem is there was nobody was interested in that degree of craft and, 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 and uh, mindfulness. Everybody was screaming and cheering for the roller coaster ride. It was a brave new world that awaited. And what had really happened, and I think if people are honest with themselves, and I think there's a lot of, na not navel gazing, but sort of like, mm, yeah, well, you know, how, how, you know, like when you think about the things you did when you were a teenager, and you go, mm. And a lot of people at the time felt that they jumped the queue into the big time. And it was a, it was a, it was, to use that awful parlance, it was a win win. Because there'd been no evil oil money, no financial fair play woes, which we'd been pointing the finger at all the other teams going. Oh, yeah, well, City won the title, but, you know, all their money's bent. Oh, yeah, Chelsea won this, yeah, yeah, because they just bought it. I mean, as if our players were working for free or on some whitey -E scheme. Football, football's always been about money, and it only proceeded to get worse after 1992. So everybody was distracted. And it was like the child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Lollipops, ice creams, all free today. And like, wow, look at this, look at this amazing stadium. Wow, what could, but no, nobody even asked what could go wrong. There was that video clip of that poor guy who came, came out and he said, and he was welling up. He was actually welling up. It was as if his, his, his child had said, um, Dad, you know, um, you put me through university, blah, blah, blah. And I've done really well, and I've, I've bought you um, um, a Maserati. The guy was looking around the stadium and welling up. And I, I said to somebody at the time, 
watching we had the video clip on I said this, this, this guy is just he's not happy he's just dawned on him how much all this is going to cost so the roller coaster ride the roller coaster ride has been intense and you've lost Pochettino and you didn't like Mourinho and now it's dawned on you in your heart of hearts that Deli Alley is 24 and next week you'll be 25 Gareth Bale scores against pub teams um, Eric Dyer needs counselling and this squad isn't going to do it. Nobody is going to come in and wave a magic wand. Nobody's going to get the, 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 the next song out of these guys. The only thing we're heading for here is a requiem. So you're on the roller coaster ride, you're on the roller coaster ride and it's wow, wow, yeah, crazy, wow. And then all of a sudden your artisan pizza and your craft beers are beginning to threaten to make an ugly return and your tummy feels funny and you want to get off the ride so what do you do you scream stop 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 but the man the man operating the the, the ride he can't hear you and the man operating the ride is daniel and he's in his office and he's got double glazing he's probably not even there he's probably on a golf course somewhere it's like the the, the um man united fans complaining about the glazers can't hear you. And it's too late, even if they did hear you, if they wanted to hear you, it's too late. They own the business. And this is why I was talking about Marxists, because you can't go up and say, we want in on your board. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't work like that. So there's gonna be another um, uh, protest, more bed sheets, Enoch out, so and so, everybody out, everybody out. And to what end? And it says to me, by the shape of things that we witnessed the other week when there were, there were supporters on the pavement, that it's like the stadium. It looks like there's a really big, successful football club there. But there isn't. It's just a lot of debt. And a team that's had it. And you look at those supporters, who most of whom have been banged up, on um, house under house arrest because of um, the COVID thing, and they're all there, and they at a glance, if you went past in a you know a, you know in a, a moderately um, a speeding car, you think oh, it's football hooligans, and that's the thing with top. Everything looks like something that it really isn't. So it's too late. We are a looky likey of a football club. And if you want to see a good football club, it wasn't always like that, but things change. Go up the Welland Road. If you want to see a good football club, go to Leicester. Um, so what are you going to do, Mr. Mr. Man? Came the voice of the, 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 the protagonist. I get a manager and he can manage. And that's why they get the big bucks, like I said before. But as far as getting rid of the things that now only now irritate you. It was too late. You had a chance. You would never have been able to get rid of Levy anyway. Um, not in a straightforward like, wait, go on, shoot. But the debt, the size of the involvement now is just so great. And you're stuffed. Good luck. Keep it on.